in God's house this morning. Good morning. Oh, wonderful. It's great to see you here today. I'm so excited for our Christmas service right here um, at Christmas Eve. What a beautiful day outside. I didn't see that one coming where it was going to be so unseasonably warm and our hearts are red hot for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just we're excited to be here together today to worship. I'm seeing a lot of family members, extended family have come in town. Welcome back to Elkview Baptist. You are missed and we're glad you're home. You know, we got to say, we got to, is there Christmas spirit in the house this morning? I mean, Christ and his, the celebration of his birth. Is there Christmas spirit here? Oh, come on. I, 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 we're going to find out. We're going to find out. All right. We're going to give every section of pews an opportunity to bellow it out. You're going to say, Merry Christmas. Okay. And we're going to see which section does the best. All right. All right. Now, here's how you do it. You go, Merry Christmas, all right? All right. Now, wait your turn. I know you're excited. You never know who's going to get pointed at. So watch which section goes first. Are you ready, church? All right, we're celebrating Christ, so we're going to say it. Merry Christmas, nice and loud. Are you ready? We'll start right here. Merry Christmas. Pretty good. All right, are you ready? Merry Christmas. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're coming all the way over here. Are you ready? Merry Christmas! Awesome! <laughs> there was less people over there, so it really was loud. You guys want to pipe up? You ready? All right, all eyes are on you. Jeffrey, you ready, buddy? Go take the shoe and go out your mouth. All right, ready, guys? Here we go. Merry Christmas! I'll tell you what. Give yourself a hand. It is a Merry Christmas, and the message is going to ring it loud and clear. All the music's going to ring it loud and clear. A Savior is born. We don't need a judge. We don't need a politician. We have a Savior, and that's the reason we can keep our head up and celebrate. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are here to celebrate your birth. We're excited about all our family coming together. Most of all, Lord, we understand that you bless those that made room for Jesus. And we intend right here this morning, this Christmas, to increase our hearts and have more room for Jesus Christ to occupy. Become the center of our attention. God, our worship this morning. Thank you for the Christmas spirit my church family displays love and affection and adoration of King Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Merry Christmas. Would you stand with us this morning? God's word tells us that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. In that same chapter, it also tells us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We praise God this morning for the gift of his son, Jesus, who came as a babe. And that's who we sing of this morning, Joy to the World. will conceive and bear a son and we will call his name Jesus he will save his people from their sins and also the word tells us that his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace
beautiful singing this morning. You can be seated. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Uh, as just a casual observer, I would say that this is the section that won the Merry Christmas this morning. Uh -huh. A couple of things uh, that I've heard this morning, just this morning. Patty Smith has had a stroke. So remember Patty and Carl and the rest of the family. Uh, we hear she's headed in a good direction. So remember that family. Also, uh, uh, Leanne Ford's mom had gallbladder surgery, emergency gallbladder surgery. So remember those prayer requests. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be up here and to, to pray. And uh, also just for the privilege that we have uh, through what we're singing about this morning because Christ came for us and we can walk confidently into the throne of grace where we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. And we do need some things, Lord. There's a lot of things that happening that are happening this time of year. There's people that's lost loved ones this year and this will be the first Christmas that they will face without those loved ones and with that empty chair at the table with us a just special grace upon them, Lord. And uh, think about my brother-in-law this morning who uh, lost his sister suddenly and uh, had to go to Dallas to, for the funeral. So we just asked, Lord, to be with him and uh, give him peace and comfort and with his mother also. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that uh, there's things that we should consider at this time of year, this joyous time of year, we think of those questions, uh, have you not heard, have you not understood from the beginning because you told us in your word that Christ was coming and you told us the signs of his coming, uh, you said that even kings who had not heard would hear and those that had heard and not understood would consider. You said that when Jesus came, that he would deal with us wisely, that he would be exalted and extolled, and he would be very high. So Lord, we thank you that we're here this morning to lift him up and to worship him and to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We do thank you for the time of year and for this time we've already seen this morning so many people that we usually don't see here and we've got to wish them a Merry Christmas and uh, we are looking forward to meeting our family later this afternoon and thank you Lord for all of us who are receiving family and having just a joyous time but let us consider for a moment the real reason that we're doing that. Lord, we thank you for uh, this church. We're looking forward to moving into a new year. And we ask that we'd all grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ in the new year. We ask you to bless Pastor Charles this morning with a message to inspire us. Thank you, Lord, again for this season and for the time we can worship Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Born, Christ is born, Christ is born, Christ is born. 
Christ is born for you. Oh, come, bitter and broken, come with fears unspoken, come taste of his blood. One of the best new Christmas songs written, O Come Ye Unfaithful. That was a great, great song. Well, I invite you to open your Bible to Luke chapter 2, very familiar text. And in just a moment, we will um, do a responsive reading off the screen. I would like to read the odd numbers, and we'll have the congregation read in unison the even numbers and in your bulletin is an outline of today's sermon. It kind of gives you the flow of thought as a look out there. Um, you know, I've even got neighbors here this morning. I'm just so excited that we see uh, quite a number of uh, family members from out of town and, and people from our community here. But uh, if you want to try to make sense of where the pastor's going with the message, there's your outline in the bulletin. Why don't we stand together? And this is the Christmas story. Uh, from God's Word, and I will begin reading in verse number 1, and you take all the even numbers, and we'll finish with verse 20. So quite a long reading. In the Christmas spirit, here we go. I'll begin. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census... So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was... And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were... The 
And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel... For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be... And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came... Now when they had seen them, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those... But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds... God bless the reading of his word. Thank you. Please be seated. You know, we don't do that often enough here at Elkview Baptist, but that was fantastic. Thank you, church. So, Christmas, you know, Christ Mass, celebration of Christ. That's the reason we're gathered today here on Christmas Eve. I have a vivid reminder of Christmas, um, many reminders of Christmas in my memory from uh, home But uh, I have one in particular from church, and it just stood out to me. I was a young teenager, and and Dr. U.G. Robertson was the pastor of Central Baptist Church, where we grew up. And I have a childhood friend here this morning, all the way from Portsmouth, and now Roger. Uh, We grew up, went to school together, and, and now he is Parks and Recreation Director in Henry County, Virginia. So glad to have Roger with us this morning. But um, he would have heard Dr. Robertson say these things too. But there was one particular Sunday, just prior to Christmas, we were young teens, and Dr. Robertson said, I don't want my family, I've instructed my family this year that we're not going to buy, don't buy gifts for me and mom. And that um, Dr. Robertson and his wife were going to buy gifts for all the grandchildren, but don't buy any gifts for us. Now, I remember sitting there thinking as a young teen, wow, Christmas, you mean you're not going to receive any gifts? Bummer. I mean, that's, that was the psyche of a, of a, you know, 12 or 13 year old, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. And that's how it impressed my mind. And I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of radical. Okay, pastor, if that's what you're going to do. But he, he went on to say, you know, I want to sanctify. Uh, we're trying to set Christ apart in our hearts a little bit more. So we're going to be part of giving, but we don't particularly this year just want to be receiving. Let us give and accept it that way. And, and so that stood out. Well, in a similar way, I would just call us back to the celebration of Christ. And there are many peripherals around Christmas, we're off work for an extended period of time, family comes in that we don't see for a long time, and there are gift givings, but let's not fail to set ourselves apart for Jesus. Let's make more room in our heart for him today. So the scripture is guiding our thinking, and I want you to notice the flow. Caesar makes a declaration in the passage, and it's a burdensome declaration of taxation. But the angels announce a celebration, and it leads to the shepherd's jubilation. All this right here in God's word. You know, Caesar makes his decree there for the world 
to be taxed the Roman world. And we know which Caesar this was. Caesar was a title, but there were different subtitles that would go with and identify which Caesar we're talking about here. This was Caesar Augustus. But you need to know a little bit more about this man. It plays into the meaning of Christmas. Follow this. Caius Octavius was the grand nephew and adopted son and the primary heir to Julius Caesar. Octavius ascended to undisputed power in 31 BC. Two years later, in 29, the Roman Senate declared Octavius to be the first Roman emperor. Now, that was a shift away from a Republican government, a republic leadership, to an all authoritative emperor. That happened in 29 BC. And then Octavius was honored by the Roman Senate when they gave him the title in 27, they gave him the title Augustus, which in that language at that time, Caesar Augustus. Augustus means exalted one. It gives the connotation of religious veneration. Romans Republic government was effectively abolished under Augustus. He was given supreme military authority all the way until his death in 14 AD. That is the, that is the climate and that is the world of um, change that our Savior was born into. Now, there's another heavy lifter, a big name in this passage in verse number one or two, actually. There is a governor of Syria, so, and his name was Quirinius. And Quirinius governed Syria, we know, from 6 to 9 AD. And for 1,700 years, that's all we knew. That he governed Syria, and yet the Bible says, Luke records that this taxation took place while Quirinius was governing Syria under Augustus. And yet, archaeology had not caught up with the Bible yet, as is often the case. The Bible is never wrong. You keep digging long enough, and you'll find it. So, in 1746, the first evidence emerged from archaeology. A tablet was unearthed in Trivial, uh, Rome, near Rome, a little town called Trivoli. And that tablet revealed that Governor uh, Quirinius governed Syria two separate times. And it was the earlier period that he was governing Tyre, uh, uh, Syria that's referred to by Luke. You see, the Bible is accurate and inspired without error. And you can trust what God's word says. Caesar's made a declaration. And it required the whole world to be hassled. Every Jewish man in the region had to make their way back to the hometown of their fathers. They had to declare their identity. They had to declare their poverty, um, the number in their family. Um, so a census was being taken, and then there was a certain tax levied on each family. All this was going on. Caesar's declaration required transportation. It required legal paperwork. It required taxes. If you will, let me say it this way. This was the first commercialized Christmas ever. And here we have it coming right out of an edict. But during all of that commercialization of God was moving things into place for the real celebration, the real jubilation he was using a government's decree to move, get this, his people in the place where specific prophecies would be fulfilled. Because in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son into the world. So look at verse 4. It's a very special verse. Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea. That's a region the city of David, that's a particular city, and the city's name Bethlehem, and now we're told he was of the house of David. 
You see, the credible Christmas, the authentic Christmas, is it's not a commercial one, but we're celebrating the birth of Christ. You know, the Bible says in Genesis 3 that the Messiah would be a human, not an angel. Now think about that for a minute. All through human history, all through the Old Testament, God the Father is a little bit hard to relate to. He's quite difficult to know how to approach. And it's a little, more of a dreadful scene in the Old Testament. But my friends, Jesus came. And can we not understand that it's so much easier for us to understand the Father by looking at the Son. And that is his love for you. And that is his effort to walk with you in your life. The incarnation. You know, if we struggle to believe that God would so effort and make so much effort to enter into our world, if we struggle to believe in his birth, we're going to struggle at the cross to understand his death. The Bible says it was a fulfillment of prophecy. Genesis 3 said he would be a human. We didn't need an angel to die for us. We need someone to defeat sin in the human race. And then in Genesis 12, another prophecy was said that the Messiah would come as a Jew, not a Gentile. So God selected a nation through which to bring his son. And then Genesis 49 says that uh, the Messiah would be born into the tribe of Judah. And so it's referenced in verse 4, Judah. And then in 2 Samuel 7, the Bible says that the Messiah would be from the family of David. From the family of David. And in Micah 5, he would be born in the town of what church? Bethlehem. And then in Isaiah 7, he would be born of a virgin. And verse 5 of this text says, Mary was betrothed to Joseph because the Holy Spirit of God had placed the embroy in the womb. God himself had placed the baby in Mary's womb. All of this prophecy fulfilled here made reference to Caesar decrees a census, but our father is moving human history along and bringing his son into the world. And here, oddly, when they came to the inn in Bethlehem, there was no room. And this morning, again, we muse on the thought, have we created a palace in our heart for King Jesus to reside? You know, we're not asking us, we allowed a little corner of our life for him to be referred to, but is he on the throne of our heart today? Have we any room for Jesus? Well, Caesar's declaration was made, but the angel said, we're going to have a Merry Christmas. And there was a celebration announced. And I want you to follow the flow here. Why did the angels announce to some anonymous shepherds. We don't know their names. And shepherds were not the highest caste, if you will, in Israel. They were important labor force. But why did the angels appear over shepherds' fields and announce the birth of the Messiah, thousands of years of prophecy pointed to this event, and they announced it to shepherds in the pastures outside of Bethlehem. I would say this is more significant than we realize. You know, Bethlehem is a few miles away from Jerusalem, and there is a very important holiday every year in Jerusalem that is serviced exclusively by Bethlehem. This holiday that takes place in Jerusalem, Bethlehem exists. Its entire economy revolved around the holiday in Jerusalem. Remember David, who's in the lineage of Christ? Jesus, the Messiah, came from David. David was found as the youngest son of Jesse, and David was not called to Samuel to be evaluated if he would be anointed king. David was the little 
brat, so to speak. And where was David when all the older brothers were being evaluated? He was keeping the sheep in the pastures of Bethlehem. Because Bethlehem provided all the little lambs for the annual Passover in Jerusalem where Jews would pilgrim from around the world and they would go through Bethlehem and pick up their sacrificial lamb or the lambs are transported up to Jerusalem but they would get their sacrificial lamb and there you have in the lineage of Jesus one that provided sacrificial lambs, but Jesus himself, born in Bethlehem, was and is the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. These shepherds needed to hear first because their jobs weren't going to be there that long. Those lambs were not needed after Jesus Christ, the final sacrifice. Oh, I tell you, the angel said, it's time to have a celebration. And they gave, and I, I put this together, and I hope it's not too cheesy, but they gave a soother, and they said, there's a Savior, and let me give you a sign, and then they sang a song. So let's look at that real quick. In verse number 10, the angel said, it's time to celebrate, shepherds. Do not be afraid. Now, I've already gave you a little bit of the geopolitical atmosphere of Jesus' day when he was born. We had a worldwide emperor that wasn't known for being polite. In spite of all that was amiss in Israel, Israel was under occupation. In spite of all that was unsettled in that region, in spite of everything that was wrong in the world, let this settle into your soul this morning. In spite of everything wrong in Jesus' world, the angel said, fear not. We need to put that in our mouth and let that be our little pacifier, our soother. We need to suck on that. I don't know what's not going right in your world today, but the angel said it. Thousands of years ago, it's still good for today. You do not need to fear. Take Jesus as your Savior. Your solution is not, well, well let me just calm down a minute. Get a breather. A soother. A soother is given, fear not. I bring you good tidings of great joy to all people. I see the epistle of Christmas as good tidings. There's some good news on the way, and it's true today. The epistle of Christmas is good tidings. The effect of Christmas is great joy. The song was sung, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us, fear must go. Let's let Emmanuel reside within redefine our heart and push that mess out. The epistle of Christmas is good tidings. The effect of Christmas is great joy. The extent of Christmas is to how many people? It's offered to all people. In Abram, in Abraham, and in his descendants, all families of the earth will be blessed. And today around the globe, right here at this church, we're supporting 35, 36 different missionaries that right now are around the globe seeing the other families on the planet know about Abraham's descendant, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. A soother was given, fear not, a Savior was proclaimed. And my friends, this is, this is the beauty of God's word right here. It is not a soldier named Octavus that we've got to look to for our stability. It is not a judge in the Roman court or our Supreme Court that we've got to look to for our security. It is not a politician that we have got to have in order to have our security. Fear not. You need Jesus in your life. 
And in that Roman world, what a startling message. What a contrast. You know, verse 11 gives Jesus his function, his title, and his identity. Jesus is, is a function. That, is, that, that name means Savior. Christ is a title, the anointed of, of God, the Old Testament title. Lord is his deity, his identity. Oh, the angel said, let's celebrate. Fear not. I give you a Savior. And there's a sign. And we've already talked about fulfilled prophecies, but this particular sign was something that even shepherds can understand. You're going to go and find a manger. And in that manger, a little feeding trough is a manger. And in that manger, you'll find a babe wrapped in the coarsest of materials, swaddling clothes. And that'll be a sign to you. You'll know you're looking at the one the angels have marked when you see that babe. You know why? A manger. You know, we're told that these, um, these were carved out caves on the side of the road that an animals, this wasn't a wooden shelter, but this was just a, a cave where animals would board at night and... Um, and there would be, like I say, a feeding trough in there. And this is where Joseph and Mary and Jesus was born in this carved out cave on the side of the path tra where travelers went by. Why such a lowly spot? And I would remind us that anybody can walk the path of the manger. Anybody can approach the manger. Anybody can find Jesus that would choose to find Jesus. They can go down the path of the manger. If he had been in a palace, if he had been in a war room, if he had been locked away behind big doors, he would have been hard to understand and accessible, but anybody can approach the manger except a proud person that would question God and say, I don't think I need Jesus. A true story. Louis the Fourteenth died in 1717 in France. At the time he died, his empire was the most glorious one on earth. He referred to himself, Louis the Fourteenth, as the Sun King. When he he had made arrangements ahead of time how his funeral would be done, he had a gold casket that his body was laid in and all the lights in the cathedral were to be turned out it was just ambient light coming in through the windows but there was a single candle on that gold coffin and he said let that be the only light there as you begin my funeral and so it was bishop massillon began to speak over the deceased Louis the Fourteenth, and as he began to speak, he reached down and he snuffed out the candle, and he said to the congregation, "Only God is great." You see, anyone can come to the manger and say, "I understand." Prophecies of God's holy word have been fulfilled in this child. And he was born in the town of Bethlehem where the sacrificial lambs came from. And he lived a sinless life. And he took the sins of all who will believe to the cross. And they are paid in full. Merry Christmas. It's only the proud that can't benefit from Jesus Christ's birth. Well, the angels gave a song. They said, sing. How many thousands of songs have been written about Jesus? Oh, come, all you unfaithful. That, I, that might, I think that's the second time I've heard that. How many of you think that was the first time you heard that song this morning? That's at least half our church. 
And the songs keep coming because Jesus keeps saving. He keeps intervening in lives and people meet him and they know him to be God's love expressed toward us. And their lives are put on the right path. He is the Savior. Every Christian needs a song. I'm telling you, we need a song. What song moves you? Think about this. This week, don't let, don't let the weekend get a song on your heart and say, this is it. I moved. My emotions are stirred. My, the, the, the truth in my mind is resuscitated when I hear this song. And sing it, church. Sing it to yourself. Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and edify yourself. Put a song, let Christmas put a song back in your heart. And when you wear that song out a month from now, you can find another one. And you can wear that one out. The angel said, it is time to dance. It is time to celebrate. And the angels are singing. Glory to God in the highest. I see praise in that song. Praise. And then I see peace on earth, goodwill toward men. I see, oh, think about this, peace on earth, but wait, Rome is in control, and there's war on every side, and there's, peace is not prevailing on earth. The, yes, that's true, but follow this. God said, I will there be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. The Bible speaks of a coming kingdom where the prince of peace will cause all wars to cease. It's coming, friend. Where swords of nations will be turned into plows. Where nations will We'll go through generations and not learn war again. There is a coming time of peace on earth. But why wait for that millennial reign to come? Why wait? Because right here, this peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Notice the words of the text. Inspired by God. This peace is God's offer. This peace must be received by man. This peace need not wait for Christ's return and his reign on this earth. This peace, if asked for, can be realized now within our hearts. We have peace with God. I'm quoting Bible. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ has taken those who are at enmity with the Father and he has reconciled them and made them at peace. Everywhere you find a knee bowed authentically and humbly to Jesus Christ, peace on earth advances. Merry Christmas, church. Peace. Have we made room and receive Jesus Christ. He's the peacemaker. And he squares everything that's crooked in our life. If we will humbly, it says these words, if we understand we're sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the wages of sin is what, church? Death. Death. And Jesus did that. But the gift of God is what, church? Eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Merry Christmas. You see, the angels gave a song, and they said there's glory to God in the highest. They praised God. They said peace, and then they stated purpose. God's purpose is goodwill toward men. Goodwill. Have you accepted the Father's goodwill through Jesus Christ? Well, I need to hurry. Our time's almost gone. You know, I get awkward feeling up here some weeks because I look out there and there's, you know, 150, 180 out there and there's another 20 or 30 or 40 in other parts of the building. And I go, I'm standing between these nice people smiling and lunch. That's not a spot you always want to be. But I find myself here week after week. So you pray for me there. 
Because when Chris Parker starts growling, it's intimidating. <laughs> the angel's declaration was, fear not, a Savior is born. A sign is fulfilled. A song is imparted. Start singing, church. And the shepherds, they did their part. They started a jubilation. The shepherds' jubilation You see, the shepherds heard about Jesus, and then they sought Jesus. They went to evaluate. And I'm asking today, is there someone here? You're hearing our claim that Jesus can turn a life around. He will take your sin, and you don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve to be forgiven. But my friends, the Scripture says, he will wash us. White as snow. And before God, we're clean. And as we learn to walk with him, our feet will be on a new path. Everybody will have an increase of peace who bows the knee to Jesus Christ. You know what? I can't settle what's messed up in Washington. And I can't even settle what's messed up in Charles. But that's why God gifts us a Savior. And I have received him. And I ask and encourage you to make room in your heart and bring and allow Jesus to take over this morning. The shepherds heard about Jesus. They sought Jesus. Why in the world does God give people revelation? All this Bible, 1,600, written over 1,600 years by 40 different authors coming from at least three different continents on the world. In four different languages, this scripture was written. My stars, why does God give revelation to start with? So we can sit there and go, hmm, I'm not sure if I get that. Okay, Louis the 14th, you better humble down a little bit and you better look into that holy book and you better see God's love for you because his love is running after you. Would you stop running from him and humble ourself, be saved? You know, the experience of the shepherds, why does God give revelation? It's so we would apply it is so we would respond and live up to the revelation. The shepherds heard about Jesus. They heeded what they heard. They went to see Jesus, and then they became heralds for Jesus. So please let me be a herald for Jesus. They expounded in verse number 17. It says, they made Jesus widely known. They they had just seen a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. They had just heard what the angel said about him. They went out and told everybody around Bethlehem, Hey, angels, baby, promised one. That's what we heard. It's amazing. They expounded on their current experience with Jesus. We need a current experience with Jesus. So we have something exciting to share with our neighbors. And verse number 20 says, and we're going to do this in just a minute. We're going to leave here. And just like verse 20 says, the shepherds returned glorifying, and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. We're going to sing and we'll glorify and praise God. So let's close this message with this. Caesar... Augustus. Now you know the backstory. He was really Caius Octavus. Caesar Augustus is not the exalted one. Augustus, <laughs> not. Caesar Augustus is not the exalted one. It's Jesus that was born in that lowly manger. He is exalted to the right hand of the Father. The angel said, it's time to celebrate. By faith, the shepherds began to jubilate. How's your heart this morning? Would you stand together with your heads bowed, please? We want to pause in this holy moment and just celebrate. Celebration takes different forms with our heads bowed. Music is played, and you may just want to sit right there and just weep. Just say thank yous to the Lord Jesus. 
you may want to come take Pastor Curry at the front, take him by the hand and say, I need help finding Jesus as my Savior. Whatever the response is, maybe you just want to come to this altar and pray. We're going to take a moment here on Christmas Eve and let the jubilation begin. through another Christmas without knowing the Savior personally. Our heads are bowed and we're trying to give a public invitation as privately as we can. Pastor Curry is here explicitly for helping you be born into the family of God. You come. The Lord spoke to you. up this way, church family. You know, um, even though the church office is closed on a lot of the days this week, um, I'm going to check my voicemail every single day. 965-3325. That's the number to the church. If you leave a voicemail and you say, Pastor, I want to pray. I am going to celebrate and we're going to pray together. Let's celebrate Christmas authentically by knowing Jesus Christ. And let's give him more room in our hearts than we have ever before. Well, Terry's going to lead us through a little worship. And then you're dismissed. Thank you for listening, but let's sing together. Oh, come. Let